Hello everybody, today we are going to be tying a October Caddis Pupa. I'm, I'm taking it basically from the Fox Pupa video. And I'm using the uh, some techniques used on that uh, fly to make the October Caddis Pupa. And uh, I'm using a really fun hook today. This is the Daiichi 1870 uh, in a size 12. And this is the swimming larva hook. And uh, as you can see, well, there's one right here, but uh, it has a really unique shape. Uh, it has a nice hump in the middle or near the back, and uh, that's going to be really good for uh, caddis patterns and uh, well, other swimming larva patterns. But uh, I thought it'd be really fun to pick some of these up in size 12 and then create some uh, caddis pupas to uh, swing during the uh, fall, uh, specifically in September and October. Um, so yeah, let's get started. For the thread, we're going to be using burnt orange 70 denier UTC thread. And you're going to want to start the uh, thread. It doesn't really matter too much on this pattern, but I'll just start right in the center. Tie it down. Cut off the tag. Then just we're going to start making a thin base. Um, where's my light here? We're going to start making a thin base and I'm going to go all the way past, I'll go right where the barb was mashed almost, right there. And it doesn't need to look super good because it's all going to be dubbed over, but uh, we're just going to put a little layer down and leave about an eye's uh, length right behind the eye. And you can tie this pattern in a beaded version, I'll show some photos. Um, right now of what they look like in the beaded version. But uh, I'm gonna tie the non-beaded version. Uh, personally, I think it actually looks better without the bead, but I'm gonna try and uh, nymph some. So I created some with uh, beads, which will do better. Now this pattern I'm gonna be specifically swinging, um, probably behind actually a uh, uh, intruder or space style uh, fly um, during the fall for, hopefully the big space fly will attract them and then the it might uh, hit this guy. So for the dubbing of this fly, it's again, <laughs> like that ant video I just posted, um, you kind of have to just mess around with it to get the right amount. There's no specified right amount. Basically, um, the back of a uh, caddis, uh, the pupa stage, uh, and also the adult caddis, they're reverse taper. So they actually start thick and then thin out. Uh, towards the head, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be adding um, a bunch of the dubbing towards the back and then kind of thinning it out. And for the dubbing, I'm using, I almost forgot to say, I'm using uh, some Hair's Ear Plus dubbing. And I really like this dubbing. I just uh, found it and has a very nice shade of, uh, this is rusty orange, and it's just a perfect shade of orange, I think, for these, uh, the October Caddis. I'm also going to be tying some in um, uh, burnt orange, but yeah, the uh, rabbit fur in bur uh, burnt orange, the Wapsi uh, brand. But yeah, I'm going to be using the rusty orange today because that's what I got. And another thing that's really cool is you see this like kind of white uh, stringy stuff that's antron and that's going to create some flash, which actually is kind of realistic because when the, uh, the pupa are uh, rising to hatch, they create a little gas bubble and this will kind of replicate that and uh, emit some shine and shimmer as well as just to attract the fish in too. Um, but yeah, they also have these, they just have a lot of like stringy stuff coming out of them too. I'll show a picture of what they actually look like right now. Um, but yeah, so I'm, now I'm just going to speed up the video while I'm, uh, so you don't have to watch me add a ton of uh, dubbing, it'll take forever. So finally, done with the dubbing. That took about maybe two or three minutes to do. 
Um, but we're, we ended right where we stopped the thread, so we have a nice length uh, behind. Um, not dubbed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tie in the antennae, or sorry, antenna, and uh, they're going to be some uh, mallard flank fibers. And I don't think it really matters the brand. I'm just using the Hairs here, uh, natural mallard, fl mallard flank. Uh, you can also use the wood duck color or even use wood duck. I have some wood duck, but I don't think I'm going to pick it apart just to use on this pattern. I like using uh, wood duck on sulfur nymphs and stuff like that where I'm actually using more of the uh, feather because that stuff's pretty darn expensive. Um, but basically what I'm doing is, so I already started on this feather, but uh, basically the feathers, of course, they look like this with a bunch of uh, um, furry and like webbier fibers down. And what you're going to do is you'll just start just kind of like what you do with a soft tackle. You peel back all the fibers kind of push them all down and then you'll have that part, the rest of them sticking up. You're just going to cut that off and that way you have a little antenna dispenser, which is really cool. Um, makes uh, tying the antenna really easy. Basically you want to pick two on the either each side and try to make sure they're even, even like uh, the right level, like so. And then you'll see how they have a natural curvature, just like that, uh, the Poopa video I showed a while ago. And you're just going to tie them in with that curvature right in front of that dubbing or right on that dubbing. It doesn't really matter too much. We're actually going to be covering this area a little bit. You're just going to tie them in. And I found if you tie them in on the, uh, the stem versus tying actually on the antenna it's, or the fiber itself, they won't, f normally they'll flare up. If you don't, they kind of keep that nice curvature, which is what we want. Uh, want. So they look like that. It's a little wonky, but in the uh, water, they get swept back and look good. So yeah, once you do that, you're going to try to cut as close as you can so you can reuse a good amount of the fibers. Sometimes you'll cut off a couple of them, like I did here. But uh, yeah, and then check it out. Then I can just, um, when making the next one, I just pull down the next set of fibers. And I got another uh, two ready to go. So it's a cool technique. I think I saw it on the Tightline video, that's where I remember seeing it, but yeah. So now that we got the antennae tied in, we'll just clean up the butts a little bit. Now we're going to hackle the fly, and I'm going to be using some uh, Hungarian partridge in the color brown. I already got one prepared here, but uh, for those that don't know how to do it, basically you take a uh, feather, you're going to pull back this kind of furry and webbier fibers. You gotta be really careful. I don't know if it was just this batch I got, but the uh, stem is very brittle. So if you pull down these fibers, sometimes you'll actually just pick off the uh, stem at the same time. So I'm gonna leave it kind of like that. Then next thing you do is you're gonna hold the tip, pull down the fibers on either side to leave kind of a small triangle. Try to make it even on each side. So like so. Then I'm going to cut off the tip to make a little uh, tie-in anchor. Uh, anchor. I'm going to put that anchor right in front of the antenna. And then I'm going to tie down the uh, that anchor right behind, right in front of the antenna. And then uh, you can use hackle pliers if you want. I don't see mine right now, so I'm not. Uh, you'll just pick the stem up with your uh, fingers, then you're going to preen back the fibers. You're just going to wrap around. You want to keep those fibers preened back. We're actually going to be tying over it to uh, push them even closer to the body, which is kind of what a poopa looks like. But uh, yeah, this is basically how you hackle. So I'm going to do all the wraps I can because I want a lot of uh, feathers or fibers, five <laughs> feather fibers on this one. You're going to tie it off and snip off that uh, stem as close as you can. And 
There's a little bit sticking out. I'll end up tying over it, I think. So I'm just gonna kinda tidy up a little bit more. Like so, perfect. This is actually looking really good right now. Um, I don't know if I'll have to tie it um, closer in. So then I have another one. I already prepared this one. And uh, you don't have to use just partridge. I bet uh, some like hen uh, soft tackle would work really well. I actually have some. I probably should use them on this pattern. So I don't really use it on anything else now because um, I only have the bigger feathers left. So I'm going to bring the fibers back and then again wrap it until there's only stem left. Chop off the stem here. I'm just gonna clean up that area a bit. So I need a little more room to tie in my ostrich, which is the last part, which is kind of just the head area. You could finish here and it'll look fine, but I like just adding a little bit of the ostrich, I think it looks even better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold everything back tight to the body and I'm actually just gonna wrap it to create a small little space for the ostrich. Like so, and now it even looks better. Everything's way closer and not as poofy, which looks good. Um, so I just have some brown ostrich here, ostrich plume. I think hair, hairline, I think it's them that made this. So I'm gonna snip off one feather. And I'm gonna. These ones, it's hard to tell, but they have a uh, concave section. I'm gonna tie that V. Um, sometimes it's really hard to tell, let's see. All right, it looks like the, uh, the dull side is gonna be the side that you uh, face towards you as you tie in. It, ideally, you want the stem to be uh, closer to the eye of the hook when wrapping. All right, so I'm gonna tie it in there. And I'm gonna do my wraps. I'm gonna wrap really close to each other. I'm gonna try and pull everything back so there's nothing Crowding the uh, hook eye. Take my whip finish tool, throw some in. And you can add some head cement on this pattern. It's not next to me right now, so I'm not. I'm just gonna kind of, you can lick your fingers and uh, or use some uh, water. You're also going to push that ostrich back. Oh yeah, there's the uh, October caddis pupa. It's a great pattern to swing. It's bright, attractive, definitely good in the late evenings, uh, or whenever the caddis or October caddis are hatching. Yeah, size 12 should attract some uh, big fish. Um, yeah, I'll show you the ones with the bead. You probably saw them already, I probably showed them, but uh, um, the ones with the bead all nymph, and then these bigger ones I'll probably swing. Yeah, good looking pattern, and uh, I'm excited to fish it. Thanks for watching.